Hey everybody, this is Neil with the Scuttering Report. And I've got my new dig set up here with my uh, ASL taken out of storage and put into my office. And I've got my headset on because this is the best microphone I have. Maybe in the future I'll have a desk microphone to do these live videos. But today we're going to do Scuttering Report number 32. We're going to talk about Operation Martlet from Lone Canuck Publishing. Very modestly priced uh, module, $37.00. But it packs quite a bit of content, and I'm going to go over it, going to go over a little history of Operation Martlet, and then give you a flyover of the map. So let's dig into it. All right, let's drop Operation Martlet on the trusty ASL Academy mat. But before I actually jump into the contents, I'm going to go over a little history of Operation Martlet. One of the things that I enjoy about ASL is learning about World War II history, which is actually one of the intents of the designer of Operation Martlet, who was not George Kelm. It's somebody else, and I'll, and I'll go over that here in a bit. If you want to skip over the history, just use the handy dandy timestamps down below, and you can jump right to the content, uh, the different aspects of the content of Operation Martlet. So Operation Martlet was basically a precursor operation to uh, Operation, the larger Operation Epsom, which was the operation to capture uh, Caen, France, just after the invasion of Normandy in June 1944. Operation Martlet kicked off about a day before um, Operation Epsom to secure the right flank around Khan to open up the larger forces of Operation Epsom to eventually encircle and capture Khan. That was the goal anyway. Um, and if we take a look at this map here, you can see that uh, Operation Martlet actually has three objectives to it. And this is covers Objective Barracuda, which was the first objective. Um, and you can see here there, here, there are two other uh, objectives um, that followed along that right flank um, around Khan. There was uh, Objective Walrus, um, and then there was Objective Albacore, which is an interesting name, named after a tuna. Um, and there are plans, if you read through the few pages of historical background for this module, there are plans for Operation Walrus to be released as a module by the same designer, as well as Operation Albacore later on. I don't know the dates of that. That's just mentioned in here in the historical notes. And I'm assuming that um, <clears throat> they will be linked up in some way to have one large Operation Martlet that's composed of the three objectives of Operation Martlet, Barracuda, Walrus, and Albacore, to give one large tactical mission, or at least allow them to be played maybe sequentially, one after another, where the outcome of one affects the beginning of another, something like that. That would be very cool. Um, then again, they could be completely separate modules that you play independently of the other two. But having all three objectives as one large Operation Martlet would be a, a final cool design. Uh, okay, that's uh, that's it for just a quick, short history lesson. Let's actually jump into the contents now. <clears throat> We've got the cover sheet. Oh, I should mention one of the things, I briefly mentioned it in the intro. One of the things I really like about Lone Connect Publishing is um, the price versus the scale. So this is $37, as I mentioned. Most of their historical modules are reasonably priced. They're in the maybe $30 to $40 range. Maybe there are a few that are even down to $25. And you usually get, for that, you get maybe five to eight scenarios, one to two tactical missions, usually a historical map, and usually one sheet of counters, either a full sheet or a half sheet, something like that. Um, that's a good, pretty good price. Some people also say, well, you need other modules to play that. It's not a standalone. And uh, I would counter by saying, um, no pun intended, but I would counter by saying, 
you know, if you're an ASL player and you're dipping your toe into the third party realm of ASL, like Lone Canuck Publishing, I think the assumption is you're fair, you're, you're an enthusiast and you're probably going to have all the counters you would need to play pretty much anything in the third party space. And there really isn't a need for you to be buying even more counters if they're not needed in the module. In other words, they're special units, armor, um, or counters, fortifications that are needed to actually play it. You should have plenty of uh, counters in the other modules you bought because you probably are an enthusiast. So I have no problem with it requiring other modules to be able to play um, low Canuck publishing modules and other third party uh, publishing modules as well. So let's jump into this. So we have the cover sheet. <clears throat> A uh, little bit of history, some of their other offerings. Um, and then we get into Objective Barracuda, which is what this covers. The first part of Operation Martlet, which was a precursor to Operation Epsom right after D-Day. Uh, it starts on June June 25th, and it's uh, it pits the, uh, what is it, the 49th, yeah, the 49th British Infantry Division against... Uh, what was it, Panzer, Panzer Lair Division and the basically the 12th SS uh, Panzer Division Hitler Youth um, in June 44. Um, there's only a few pages of uh, historical design notes here. It talks about game scale and some of the concessions that he had to make um, to transfer Operation Martlet, specifically Objective Barracuda, from reality into game things like opening bombardments that happened there were lots of mist mist and fog and uh, low low visibility um, on the real battlefield he had to account for that Creep, keep, creeping barrage elr <clears throat> formation boundaries um collapse of panzer Lair division uh, the german strategy engineer weapons uh, and then he comes up with a conclusion in here. And then somewhere in here, I forget exactly where, he mentions that in development is um, Operation Martlet, Objective Walrus, and Objective Albacore, which are the follow-on um, objectives per the map I showed there at the beginning. And the designer of this is Andy Cochran, retired captain, British Royal Artillery. As far as I know, he is the first designer to have a uh, his work published by Lone Canuck Publishing. I think George has done the design on all the previous historical modules. So I believe, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe this is a first, which is cool. All right, let's jump into the basic of the rules. <clears throat> there are a set of special rules, like most of uh, uh, third-party historical modules, and they primarily cover terrain features. And there's no no difference here. It's it's almost exclusively covering uh, terrain features that are on the map. And some definitions. <clears throat> uh, and then we get into the actual tactical mission rules, which are a little bit different than the general rules that apply to the map. And the the scenarios, all the scenarios, and the tactical mission, which is a tactical mission, is basically uh, Lone Canuck Publishing's term for campaign game. Same sort of thing. So we get into the special rules for the tactical mission itself. Talk about uh, some special units, uh, some British assault engineers, uh, four five eights with a four smoke exponent. There are some counters included for that. Here's a map, another map similar to the one I just showed, showing the different objectives of Barracuda, Walrus, and Albacore as well. And then we get into the actual uh, starting forces for the tactical mission. The tactical mission is similar to a campaign game in that it has different parts to it. In this case, for this one, there are, there are five tactical missions to the whole thing, and in between the tactical tactical missions there's basically a refit phase the this is the after each uh, tactical mission scenario you need to do go through these rule steps it's similar to a refit phase in a mmp style of campaign game and all the rules to go over that are in this section here uh, 
and then the uh, objective barracuda credits here at the end and then these are the uh, reinforcement groups for the essentially the refit phase the German and the uh, British 49th division requisition records some some uh, bookkeeping tables to use and here's a uh, here's an overall map I'm not going to be able to fit the overall map under here but I'll do a flyover um, and I superimpose this in the uh, map at the beginning as well of the objective Barracuda. Basically, basically the objective is um, basically to capture uh, what is it, Fortnay, probably pronouncing that wrong, village here. That's the first objective of uh, Martlet, objective Barracuda. Let's go into the scenarios here. There are eight scenarios and like I said for $37 you get eight scenarios a five game tactical mission a sheet of counters and a large I wouldn't say large but a nice uh, historical map so eight, eight scenarios there here's the first one most of these scenarios they all play out on a part of the historical map here and I would say two-thirds of them have either night, low visibility, and or fog at the beginning of them. So if you play these, brush up on your low visibility rules here. And they are of different, different scale, different sizes, but none of them are unreasonably sized, the standalone scenarios. Prize for a Panther. This one looks interesting to play because it's only five turns. It looks like it could be fun. Might have to play this one. So Scott, if you're watching, you might do this one. Here, read it closely. Okay, on to the next one. Parcel for the Chateau. Another short one, five turns. <clears throat> Forward the Dukes, eight turns. Maybe low visibility at the end here. across the bordel low visibility and low visibility polar bears first dance and then the sheet of counters here you've got your uh, your in British engineers got some support weapons and a bunch of uh, of Shermans here and then here you have uh, AOT AOT is uh, Artillery uh, artillery observer team. Yeah, that's what it is. And there's special rules in here for the for these units. And these are fairly common in Lone Canuck Publishing uh, modules. The Steelworks was the last one we played. And uh, even though we played the full, the largest scenario in that one, um, the the other scenarios within it have a uh, AOTs. Funny thing is, the Steelworks did not have a tactical mission. It just had one large kind of monster scenario but uh operation martlet has a, a tactical mission so here's the uh counters just a small sheet just to supplement your brits and give you some Ger german uh, artillery observation teams or artillery observer teams um let me get this out of the way we'll go over the map real quick uh, i'm going to leave it like this for a sec just to show you the size of the hexes most of Low Canuck Publishing Modules maps print oversized hexes. I'll throw a couple counters on just to give you an idea of what the hex size looks like. Good size hexes. You're not going to be crowded. You're not going to be able to double up stuff, but your counters are definitely not going to be crowded uh, playing on this map. Now let's see if I can unfold it a bit. And then after that, I will do my obligatory and usual flyover of this map. I cannot. There's too big. Let's just take a look at the uh, flyover, and we'll do that right here. All right, here's a quick flyover of the Operation Martlet map. North is that direction. Here's the turn track six to eight turns for each tactical mission scenario there are five 
for the overall tactical mission. So as I said, north is up that way. So the Normandy beaches are all in that direction. Um, the city of Caen is basically up this road, this direction. So this would be the right flank of Caen, if you reverse the map. And the British forces are coming in from this direction to take the uh, village of uh, Fontenay in Objective Barracuda. Let's just do a zoom in. Lots of orchards, river, river runs through it. Looks like one, two, three, four, five levels of elevation. If I'm estimating correctly, counting correctly. And a lot of grain and open terrain up on the uh, north side of the map. I would estimate the map is about two feet by three feet roughly easily fits on a table but it's a good uh, playing size for a campaign game slash tactical mission again nice big hexes as I showed in the uh, previous part oh, I forget what this uh, terrain feature is called it's in the special rules. I, I missed it. Probably similar to a polder decision that else, or it might be a culvert or a irrigation or something. I can't recall. That's it for uh, Operation Martlet map flyover. Let's uh, take you back to the regular video. Okay, we're back from flyover. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, nice looking map. Not too big, but it gives you lots of room to play on and a lot, a lot of room for your counters not to be crowded. Um, I think that's it. $37. Good price. Good content. I have not played any of this. Um, I'm kind of interested in playing that one scenario I, I outlined. But uh, that's it for Lone Connect Publishing's Operation Martlet. And we'll see you in uh, scattering report number 33. I do not know what I'm going to unbox. Hopefully, uh, Manila Sword of Fire will come out soon. I'll, as soon as I get that in my hands that day, depending on when I have it, I'll do a uh, unboxing, a scattering report for that. And we'll see you then.